A Sailing Boat in the Sky, Quentin Blake. Isabel and Nicholas were walking along the beach, chatting about nothing in particular. It was just an ordinary day. That is until they reached the top of the dune. Look, Nick, said Isabel. It's a boat, but it's all broken up. What do you think? Shall we try to put it back together again? The parts of the boats were all there, and Isabel and Nicholas set about trying to, pe to piece them together. These wheels seem to fit on this side, said Nicholas. It's a very funny sort of boat. They climbed in. The wind blew and the old sails filled, and slowly the boat began to roll along the beach. Strange looking bird on the port bow, shouted Isabel. Nothing strange about me, said the bird. I'm just a stork, and my name is Simona. But I've been shot in the wing, and so I can't fly. Just then, the wind blew harder. And the boat picked up speed. Quick, said Isabel, get in. They just managed to catch hold of Simona as the boat rolled along faster and faster and took off into the sky. They found themselves in the middle of the flock of birds who all looked very like Simona. The biggest of the storks flew alongside them. My name is Gus, he said. Now that you've reached, no, now that you've rescued our Simona, what about helping others? I can see plenty of people who need saving from up here. What about it? Nicholas said to Isabel. Why not? she replied. Let's go. They sailed on. Over beach after beach, and then suddenly, below them, they saw a girl running away from a group of children who were throwing stones at her and calling her names. Quick, said Simona, before they hit her on the wing. The stones bounced off the boat as Isabel and Nicholas helped the girl on, the, on board. Her name was Elwas. Why do they want to hurt me? she sobbed. I haven't done anything wrong. On and on they flew until they came across a troubling sight. A group of men were hacking away at rocks with pickaxes, and amongst them were several small boys trying to do the same. One of them was so weak. That he could not even stand. As they flew over, Isabel and Nicholas just managed to grab the boy by the hands before the boat moved off. Their new friend was called Ratchet. He had a ragged scarf around his neck, which Elwes used to wipe away the sweat from his forehead. As they sailed on through the sky. But then, oh no, said Isabel, what's this horrible dark cloud in front of us? They were over a town where everybody or everything smoked. The houses, the factories, the cars, and even the people. Soon everyone in the boat was coughing and holding their noses. It may be bad for us, said Isabel, but look at that poor boy down there. He can't breathe at all. Hold on, said Gus. Let me try to help him.
the boy was called Eric, and he was so happy to be able to breathe again. They all felt much better as they sailed peacefully through the bright, clear sky. But what's that noise? said Nicholas. It's some kind of is it some kind of storm? It wasn't a storm. It was a warplace, warplanes, rockets, and deafening explosions. They were in the war zone. We've got to get out of here, cried Isabel. But wait, she said. We must try to save that woman and her baby. The woman told them that her name was Manda. And that her baby was called Lyra. All hands were needed to help them safely aboard. But they were not safe yet. There were holes in the boat. The sail were torn, and there were so many people on board that it was sinking lower and lower in the sky. We must find somewhere to land soon," said Nicholas. "But where? At last, they came to another beach. How about there?" suggested Gus. We can't land there," said Nicholas. "Look at that awful woman with the green face. Do you think she is a witch?" "Don't be silly," said Elwes. "There's nothing to be afraid of. She's my granny, and she sells fish on the beach. Everybody thinks she is lovely." They all busied themselves taking the boat to pieces. Upside down, the hull made a shelter where Manda and Lyra could rest. Isabel and Eric hung the sails up to make a hammock. Nicholas turned one one set of wheels into a sort of washing line, and Simona and Gus used the other for a nest. Ratchet collected wood for the fire, and Elwes helped her granny with the cooking. The fish soup that night was very good. Elwes' granny had added a few special ingredients, including a flying fish, to help Simona's wing get better quickly. It would be lovely if you could all stay here with me a bit longer," she said. Yes, but how can we? said Nicholas. We've got our parents and friends, added Ratchet, a long way from here, and a lot of journeys still to make, said Gus. It was at the moment that Ratchet noticed a ruined cabin at the end of the beach. Look, with all those planks, we could build another boat, a much, much bigger one. And I know what," said Elwes' granny. "I can stitch together all my old dresses, my curtains, and my handkerchiefs, and you'll have the most beautiful sails in the world." And so, one bright morning, when Simona was able to fly again. There was an amazing new sailing boat in the sky. And what happened after that, you will just have to imagine.